Adding a string of Christmas lights to your home projection display can add a sense of realism to it. So today let's look at a fairly simple way we can add this using DaVinci Resolve. Note that this tutorial assumes you are familiar with how to build a home projection show in Resolve. If you are not sure how to build your own shows using Resolve, be sure to review the complete guide playlist available on this channel. Let's begin on the edit page. Before we can create a string of lights similar to this, we will first create a small subset of lights that we can eventually duplicate. Open a workbench timeline, or create a new one from scratch. Right-click anywhere within your media pool, and choose New Fusion Composition. Fusion Compositions allow us to work within the Fusion page without having to first place a piece of media onto the Edit Page timeline. Name this whatever you like, and change the run time of the composition if desired. You can always extend or shrink this later on. Add the Fusion Composition to the Edit Page, and then open this into the Fusion page. Start by connecting a background node to the media out node, and make this transparent by reducing the alpha property of the background node all the way to zero. Next, add a merge node. And then bring in another background node. Note that I changed the color to white here, but down the road we will be using color correctors, which won't work on white backgrounds, so feel free to change this to any color you want. Now, bring down an ellipse mask, and connect this to the background node, then connect that to the merge node. Select the ellipse mask, then resize and place the mask in a position that will allow you to duplicate it, while still having enough room. Now it's time to add additional lights. Select the background node, and pull up the search menu with Ctrl plus space under keyboard. Search for, duplicate, and select this from the menu. Using the inspector menu, set the number of copies to however many different colored lights you want. In this example, we will stick with three. Then, change the center properties to spread the copies out evenly. Add a color corrector on the limb, and be sure to check the pre-divide, post-multiply checkbox in the inspector menu. If you haven't already done so, change the background color to anything other than white. Here I'll make them blue, which is a color I would like to appear along my string of lights. Next, bring down an ellipse mask from the menu. Ensure the ellipse mask is covering only one of the lights. This doesn't have to be a perfect fit. It just needs to surround the entire light without touching the others. Then connect the mask to the color corrector. With the color corrector selected, modify the colors in the inspector using the color wheel to find your desired color. Add another color corrector to the limb for the third light and don't forget the predivide post multiply checkbox. Repeat the same steps to change the color for that third light. Next we will animate the masks to move. Select each mask and add a keyframe to the center property using the inspector. Then, move ahead in the timeline just a bit. In this example I'll move forward 20 frames. To start, Let's take the mask on the far right, and move it over the first light on the far left. Then move the mask that is in the middle, over to the far right. Jump ahead to frame 40. And move the mask for the red light over to the middle, and the mask for the green light all the way to the left. Finally. Jump ahead to frame 60, and move the mask for the red light back to its original starting position. Then do the same for the green light mask. Initially, this will look odd. But we are going to fix that right up. Select both of the masking nodes, and then open the spline pane by clicking on this icon. Ensure each item on the left hand side is checked to make the key frame points visible in the pane. Now, you can either click and drag over all of the points, or use the Ctrl plus A keyboard shortcut to select them all. To eliminate the animated movement of these masks, select the Step and Option from the toolbar at the bottom of the spline panel. This will change our animation so that movement jumps to the next keyframe. If the pattern looks correct, we can now render out this small portion for use on our projection display. 
ensure you are on the last frame you set a keyframe on. In this example, we set that on frame 60. On the edit page, we can see that this is 2 seconds of video. This is perfectly fine since we will make this loop when added to our projection display. Add an up marker to the timeline by hitting the O key on your keyboard. This ensures we will only render the first 2 seconds of this timeline. Open the deliver page and render this video so that it retains an alpha background. If you don't have a preset for this like I do, set the format to QuickTime, the codec to GoPro Cine form, the type to RGB 16 bit, and ensure the export alpha check mark is checked. Add this to your render queue, and then select Render. When completed, right click on the render and select Open File Location. Then import this into your media pool. Now we can add this to our house projection mapping template. Here, I have the trim layer of my template already opened in the Fusion page. Let's start by extending this tree limb of the Fusion tree to give ourselves some room for the branches we need to create. To align the lights correctly, enable your map file. And change the color coding for the background node to transparent. Now add a merge node. And bring down the 2 second blinking lights clip into the node's pane. With the media node selected, enable the loop checkbox in the inspector so that the lights automatically replay. Add a transform node, and connect everything together onto the tree limb. Resize and fit the first 3 lights onto your map file. Once they are in place, select the transform node, and bring up the search menu again with the Ctrl plus spacebar keyboard shortcut. Again, look for the duplicate node in the menu. Increase the number of copies to a high enough number to cover the space. And then move them out using the center values in the inspector. Find a distance that evenly spreads the lights across the space, and adjust the angle if needed. Note that I probably have too many copies here, but that's okay because the lights are contained in the house trim mask, and will not show anything outside of the masked area. This looks pretty good, let's apply this string of lights to the rest of the house. For this demo, I'll just focus on adding them to the top of the house, and ignore the windows or any other trim pieces. Add another merge node to the tree limb, and then bring down a transform node under it. Connect the branches that contain our blinking lights to it by dragging from the duplicate node over to the newly added transform node, and connect everything together. Now, select this transform node, and move the second set of lights into position. Find too many necessary adjustments using the same transform node. Perform those same steps for any additional areas you want to add the lights. Add a merge, then a transform, and connect the branch with the string lights. Then use the transform node to move the lights into position. It may take a lot of little tweaks to get this looking right, depending on where you are adding the lights to. Once all your lights are placed you can add a glow effect to them to help add to the realism. Bring up the search menu, and search for glow. Zoom into the preview pane for a better view, and use the inspector to adjust the glow settings. With the glow node you may think more is better but you can overdo it and inadvertently make it look awful when displayed on your home. So be careful with your adjustments. When you're happy, disable your map file and remove the background color of the trim if you are layering this on top of another layer in your house mapping template. If you want to keep things a bit more organized, you can select all of the nodes making up these lights, and then right-click and choose Group. Should you find the need to make an edit, you can right-click and choose Expand Group. Make your changes, and when done, right-click again and choose Collapse Group. That's all for today's tutorial and I hope you find it useful when building out your home projection show. If you have any questions you are more than welcome to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. And as always be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming tutorials on how you can increase the wow factor of your home projection shows.